Hi everybody. So, as you continue your research and work toward completing your annotated bibliography, the argument you might want to make in your research article may begin to take shape in your mind. And so you might consider it a good time to think carefully about what kinds of arguments you might want to make to convince your readers of your point. Argumentation has been studied in the Western world since at least 2400 years ago in Athens when Aristotle came up with three categories of argumentative appeals or three strategies writers, or in his day speakers, would use to convince their audiences. Maybe you have heard these before. They are logos, ethos, and pathos. Logos is the logical appeal. This is using logic and reasoning to get your audience to see your point the way you see it and to bring them into agreement with you. Logos uses statistics, reasoning based on facts, rules, laws, and axioms, and uses these truths to find the right path forward or to argue a point. Ethos is the ethical appeal. This one comes down to how believable you are as a speaker. Do you know your stuff? How does the audience know this? This sometimes comes down to shared values, to convincing your readers that you want the same things that they do, and that you are knowledgeable enough to believe. Credentials, shared values, common goals are all ways to emphasize the ethical appeal. Pathos is the appeal to the emotions, or the emotional appeal. In pathos, you use emotional stories, usually about individuals or small groups of people, to get an emotional reaction out of your readers. Think about that Sarah McLachlan dog video that wants you to donate money to the SPCA. It totally relies on emotion to get you to do something that you otherwise would not think very logical, which is send money to an organization for nothing of value to you in return. Now, let's look quickly at some examples of each. For Logos, let's look back at the final lines Bridget Potter writes in Lucky Girl. She says, three years after my trip to San Juan, illegal abortion officially accounted for 17% of all deaths attributed to pregnancy and childbirth in the U.S. It is speculated that the actual number was likely much higher. She goes on, today about 67,000 women worldwide still die each year from abortions, mostly in countries where the procedure is illegal. Now, Potter here uses statistics, hard facts, and allows us to draw our own conclusions. She's trying to persuade us that the laws that ban abortion do not seem to stop abortions, but rather cause illegal abortions to grow and women to die needlessly. Here's another example from Barack Obama's final State of the Union address. He wants to argue that the economy under his leadership was strong and is getting stronger. Look at how he uses logos to support his point. Let me start with the economy and a basic fact. The United States of America, right now, has the strongest, most durable economy in the world. We're in the middle of the longest streak of private sector job creation in history. More than 14 million new jobs, the strongest two years of job growth since the 1990s, an unemployment rate cut in half. Our auto industry just had its best year ever. That's just part of a manufacturing surge that's created nearly 900,000 new jobs in the past six years. And we've done all this while cutting our deficits by almost three quarters. He uses hard data and statistics to convince the public that he has succeeded. And his policies, of course. Now for a couple examples of ethos. These come in many forms. Here's one I love from David Foster Wallace. Remember that ethos refers to the ways that you make your audience view you as credible, as a source that they can trust. Wallace was sent to a lobster festival to write for a food magazine, Gourmet, but he is ne neither a food nor a lobster expert. So he found it useful to establish credibility by referring to the research he's done. 
See this passage, quote, A crustacean is an aquatic arthropod of the class Crustacea, which comprises crabs, shrimp, barnacles, lobsters, and freshwater crayfish. All this is right there in the encyclopedia. And an arthropod is an invertebrate member of the phylum Arthropoda, which phylum covers insects, spiders, crustaceans, and centipedes slash millipedes, all of whose main commonality, besides the absence of a centralized brain-spine assembly, is a chitinous exoskeleton composed of segments to which appendages are articulated in pairs, unquote. Uh, and then he goes on to say, quote, the point is that lobsters are basically giant sea insects, unquote. In the middle of giving us a barrage of information about lobsters, he sticks his head out to say, I looked it up. This little sentence gives him some credibility, so that when he claims that, quote, lobsters are basically giant sea insects, unquote, readers will believe him even though he is not an expert. Also, George Orwell uses ethos in shooting an elephant. When he says, quote, I was subdivisional police officer of the town, unquote, he is also saying that he has experienced what he's talking about and we can trust him. He's also up to using ethos when he states that, quote, at the time I had already made up my mind that imperialism was an evil thing and the sooner I chucked up my job and got out of it, the better. Theoretically and secretly, of course, I was all for the Burmese and all against their oppressors, the British, unquote. This way, when we see him argue that he was glad the coolie had been killed in the last paragraph, we know that he, that's not the real him, and we hate him less for saying it. We, also, we see also Anzaldúa and Malcolm X proving their credibility in what they're talking about in different ways. Going back into those articles, can you catch them? Maybe check out your commonplace entries and see if there's the ethical appeal involved. And think about how you can make yourself a credible speaker in your argument as well. It may include emphasizing your own personal narrative. Okay, lastly, pathos, the emotional appeal. With pathos, we make our readers feel emotionally toward a subject to get them to act. It's not always good either. Some people use pathos to get people to do things that they should not really want to do, things that are against their interests. Pathos is the most powerful appeal because it causes the strongest reaction in readers. Therefore, we must use it to support ideas we truly believe in. Let's look at some examples. Look at this image and the accompanying text from Yuval Noah Harari's book, Sapiens. Harari's arguing that there's a lot of harm involved in factory farming. Look at this image. The, cloud, the cow clearly just kind of looks sad. And a sentence such as, quote, immediately after birth, the calf is separated from its mother and locked inside a tiny cage, not much bigger than the calf's own body, is carefully designed to create an emotional reaction in readers. These phrases such as immediately after birth and separated from its mother uh, create an emotional reaction in most people. Uh, also, in our class readings, look at Roxane Gay as she explains why she decides to get weight loss surgery. Quote, after more than 15 years of refusing it, I made the decision to get weight loss surgery on an ordinary day. At home in Lafayette, Indiana, in Indiana, uh, a young man yelled at me to move my fat black ass when I was crossing a grocery store parking lot to my car. It was the last straw. I tried to hold my head high, shuffled as quickly as I could, put my groceries in my car, sat behind the steering wheel. I sat there, shaking wishing I could have been as quick in that moment to put him in his place as I would have been online. I pressed my head against the steering wheel and sobbed." Unquote. In this way, she makes an emotional appeal that makes her experience real and shows why potentially millions of people make the hard decision to undergo weight loss surgery. Also, we might recognize the emotional appeal, pathos, in Frederick Douglass's narrative as we feel tremendous sympathy for the enslaved person's condition. So these are the traditional argumentative appeals, logos, ethos, and pathos, and some examples of each. Now give them a shot in this week's discussion, and try as well as you can to incorporate each of the appeals as appropriate in your research article when you build it.